Well, God bless you and holy greetings to you, brothers and sisters. This is Scott Bradley coming to you once again with this beautiful day, a day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and glad in it. I so look forward to coming back with you again because we are still continuing our series on the dangers of dabbling in the occult. And what I am attempting to do, as I did in the first session uh, that you can go back and look at, uh, and of course, connecting with this, uh, what I'm attempting to do is to uh, show you some of the things that have been practiced in the occult, some of the things that have been practiced that are in mainstream society, embedded in the culture today, and some of these things have been brought into the church. Unfortunately, what many of us fail to understand is that the spirit that goes behind them. We're going to get, get, get into it again uh, today, and uh, most likely we're going to be carrying this over a uh, three-part uh, set. I want to, uh, thank you, there we are. I want to, first of all, start this off by encouraging you to get a copy of our latest book, The Challenges of the 21st Century Church. The Challenges of the 21st Century Church, again, written by yours truly. Uh, as we are moving into this 21st century church, and I talk about in the book, there is a, a, a new terminology called political correctness. How should the church deal with political correctness? Uh, what is the church lacking in this 21st century? Why is it that in this 21st century, uh, the church seems to be powerless? It does not have the power and possess the power that it one time did. Well, I talk about it in a great many ways. And, uh, you know, I want you to get this. Now, I want you to get this. Now, uh, again, I, I noticed that our, 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 our uh, uh, people that have been following us has gone up last week's presentation uh, had us uh, over the week over 700, close to 800 views, which I think is very good considering that we were averaging about two to 300 a week. Uh, and of course, I've expected it and anticipate that this is going to continue to uh, uh, grow. It's going to continue to expand because our ministry is going this way. I appreciate all the others. I know that a lot of people have come on uh, these uh, uh, this medium uh, with various types of teachings, but thank God for you that are listening to this. The Lord ministered to my heart and said, be faithful to this and treat it as if you were on national TV. Well, the reality is we are on worldwide worldwide uh, media. There are people that are seeing this all over the world, and I thank God for you. Uh, but again, to get the book, get the book, please get the book, The Challenges of the 21st Century Church, uh, you can go to Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Both of these are carrying my book. All you simply have to do is type in uh, uh, the, the, web, the website, and under the book title, type in my name, Scott A. Bradley, or the book title, The Challenges of the 21st Century Church. Do that. The book will come up, give you information on how to order. It's retailing at $13, $12.95. And uh, you can get the book. You can have it. You can read it. It will bless you. It will inform you. It will inspire you. And I believe it will open your eyes to a lot of things that are happening around us. These are days and times, brothers and sisters, where we need to know Jesus. Do you hear me what I'm telling you? We need to know Jesus. Not know about Jesus. Not just go to church but know Jesus. And the Bible said, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And whom the son set free is free indeed. God bless your hearts. All right. Now I want to go right into the, to the lesson here as we deal with part two, the dangers of dabbling in the occult. Again, what is the occult? The occult is, uh, as we talked about last week, matter of fact, I've got a definition here. Let me pull it right up for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. The occult, uh, supernatural, mystical, magical beliefs, practice or phenomena, black magic, witchcraft, sorcery, wizardry, voodoo, seances, all these contact with the dead, spiritual guides, as I've heard people say, I've got a spiritual guide that, that, that leads and guides me. That's all part of the occult. The occult basically is demon worship, satanic worship. That's basically what it is. And all of these things are associated with the occult. And one of the dangers of it is that in many cases, when we begin to dibble and, and dabble into certain things and say, well, Reverend, I just do that for fun. I just fool with the Ouija board because it's it's fun. It's entertaining. I uh, just have people read my my palms and, and read the cards to me and, and, and do my horoscope because it's fun. I just have people... Uh, very something because I just I just it, it's just entertainment and what you fail to understand is it's entertainment it's the same way it would be entertainment if you're fooling with a pit of snakes and pet playing with the snakes now how entertaining is that particularly if a snake bites you it's dangerous to play with snakes and when you start playing with things that entertain spirits again we are in a spirit world uh, whether you believe it or not whether you see it or not I oftentimes say this that we are passing through time 
but destined for eternity. You yourself are a spirit. You consist of body, soul, and spirit. You are actually two-thirds spiritual and only one-third physical. And a lot of times demons, what we fail to understand is that demons can attach themselves to our spirit because of certain things we play with and fool with that we have no business playing with. God forbid the people to do seances. God forbid the people to go into wizardry and, and to seek out those that had what they referred to as familiar spirits, conjuring the dead, conjuring demons, uh, calling into the next world. Uh, astral projection, that's never, we're going to try to get into that today. If we don't get into it today, uh, chances are, and I'm sure we're going to be going into this next week as well, uh, but we're going to be talking about that as well, that we may understand the powers of darkness that we should not fool with. Certain things we get into because we do not have permission. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Uh, you know, sometimes people say, Reverend, when I do this, I, 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 I get into the supernatural. You know, as often time I heard people say, I've experienced a spiritual awakening. You know, experiencing a spiritual awakening is not always complete because you may spiritually awaken the wrong thing. You can spiritually awaken in a cult. You can, a spirit, you can spiritually awaken, uh, by, be spiritually awoken by demons for their purpose. So don't just think because you had a spiritual awakening, of course you do, because you have a spirit and you've awoken to the spirit world. But there's certain places that people of God, Christians, people that are following Jesus Christ should not dwell because it's the powers and the forces of darkness. All right, that being said, last week we talked about something, and I want to continue. I talked about vibes, musical vibes. First of all, let me start this by saying that Christians do not deal in luck. Listen to me what I'm telling you. Let me say this again slow because I want you to get it. Christians do not deal in luck. Oh, man, I was lucky. Oh, and a lot of time when you're going to these uh, card readers, these palm readers, these ESP, these madams, they're trying to get you good luck, even though they'll, they'll advertise, uh, find fortune and good luck. The people of God, listen to me what I'm telling you, the people of God do not walk in luck. Luck is chance. Uh, and, 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 you know, you can hit lucky streaks, you know. But the reality is the people of God should not walk that way. We should walk dependent upon the favor and the blessing of the Lord. Blessings are not luck. Blessings are by divine providence. God grants blessings. There are certain things you can do that will bring blessing into your life. And when I say blessing, brothers and sisters, you know, we in the 21st century church have gotten way off when it comes to what blessings are. We think the only type of blessings are blessings of substance. I got a new car, been blessed with a new car, been blessed with a big house, been blessed with a lot of money. Blessings go further and deeper than that. It's a blessing to have life, health, and strength. It's a blessing to have your right mind. It's a blessing not to be bogged down with the, the, the uh, attack of demonic spirits, such as depression, oppression, anger, resentment, walking in ways uh, that, that are not pleasing to our God. It's a blessing to know that I'm going to heaven. It's a blessing to have my mind and peace of mind, knowing that even though I may go through struggles in this world, that I've got a better place. And I'm looking forward to heaven. Yes, I am. Uh, but my point is this. Luck is not a term that Christians should use, nor should we be depend upon, dependent upon it. And this is what a lot of times the cults do. Uh, cults do. Sometimes they'll give you these charms. Uh, what are charms? Sometimes these charms are designed, little medallions and, and, and little little trinkets that they give it to you to carry and, and, and certain powders they turn, tell you to burn and certain candles. You know, you, you, again, sometimes we, we look at this naively, but what you fail to understand is these charms conjure spirits. Did you hear what I said? These charms conjure spirits. You know, you think they're just innocent little charm. You think they're just jewelry you wear around your neck and, and oh, this is for protection. I'm, not, uh, I'm wearing this because uh, the madam said this will protect me. I'm wearing this because the madam said this will bring me good luck. I'm wearing this because the madam said or so-and-so said that the, the guy, in many cases, these madams are nothing but witches and warlocks. Uh, you know, even whether they realize it or not because they're being used by the devil. Uh, you, 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 you oftentimes have these charms. And what you fail to understand is that these charms are attracting spirits. Why do you get these charms? Why do they give you these charms? For good luck. 
goes back to that term luck again. Good luck. This will bring you good luck. This will bring love into your life. You know, you, you want somebody to love you. You go uh, cast a spell, put powder in their food, oh, all kind of stuff. They're charms. They're charms demonically inspired because they attract spirits, you know, uh, b burning certain candles, you know, burn this candle for, for, for money, green one for money, burn this one for, 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 for good luck, which even brings me to some of these things that preachers do. Now, I believe in prayer cloths. There is biblical evidence of prayer cloths and aprons when the Bible said uh, that uh, Peter, uh, the man of God, would take a, a, a garment and they would take it and give it to a sick person and God would heal because of the anointing in that person's life. Well, you start giving out these prayer cloths with different colors. This green one represents money. This gold one represents uh, fortune, whatever. See, now you, you, you jumped off into the occult. God does not need all these different colors representing certain things. You know, and all these prayer cloths for money ain't even necessary. Put it in your wallet. You're dabbling in the occult. You're dabbling in the occult, whether you believe it or not, whether you understand it or not. And I'm telling you, you need to quit that practice. And you that are buying these prayer cloths, again, buying them, it ought to tell you something. Send a donation. We'll send you this prayer cloth for good luck. We'll send you this prayer cloth for healing. We'll send you this prayer cloth for money. Green one goes in your wallet. The gold one goes in your partner's uh, uh, bed, whatever, whatever the case may be. You're dabbling in the occult, which is demonically inspired. You have to understand what the Bible says. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and he adds no sorrow. And so then when we start dealing with luck into charms, we're bringing on the occult. We're dabbling in the occult, and we're attracting spirits. And what's very interesting, brothers and sisters, in the 21st century, a lot of things that people do attract spirits, whether they realize it or not, and they wonder why certain things are happening, uh, you know, even in the negative. You know, because again, these things are supposed to bring positive stuff, good luck and fortune, all that kind of stuff. And you wonder with it, if it in fact even works, comes something else. Because you're conjuring spirits. And so I said this last week. Certain musics bring certain vibes. Now, here's an interesting thing. And I'm going to say some things I know that are going to offend some of you. I'm going to say some things that are going to upset some of you because you've been practicing it yourself. You call yourself a Christian. You're, you're practicing it. You're listening to it. Uh, and some people even bringing it into the church. You cannot bring every kind of music, first of all, into the church. Because once again, there's certain types of vibes that go with it that are actually a conjuring of spirits. Uh, it's interesting when you look at Music. Uh, music has always, well, music goes back even into eternity. When God created the heavens and the earth, uh, the Bible said in the book of Job, when the sons of God sang for joy, there was always music. Even Lucifer himself, Satan before he fallen was Lucifer, was a son of the morning uh, that, that uh, if I can use modern terminology, led the praise and worship. Uh, every, his voice was full of uh, uh, pipes and, and vibes and, and various other musical instruments that he used to lead the, the sons of God, the angelic host, in worshiping and praising the Lord. But he be, it was a proud angel, and iniquity and pride was, fought, uh, was found in him, and he fell. He was the most beautiful angel. The Bible said every precious stone was his covering. He was this beautiful, shimmering angel to look at. But he was proud, and his, his, his praise no longer was to worship the true and the living God, but he wanted to praise himself and wanted to be praised. And you all know the story. He was kicked out of heaven. He is now active, uh, uh, leading in a, 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 a demonic revolt, an angelic revolt against God, took one third of the angels of heaven with him in his revolt. They are not demonic spirits that we're dealing with today. So the devil knows how to deal with music. And when you look at some of the music today, uh, I'm talking about the world, it, it creates certain atmospheres. The vibes of that music, the tones of certain music, create certain atmosphere. And in many cases, it calls demonic spirits. It calls demonic spirits to take over the session. I'll tell you a story. I was a youngster. I was about, oh, I guess about uh, 11, 12, maybe 13 years old. And a fellow told us, said, I want you to come by my house. He's me and a couple of other guys. Just come by my house. I got something I want to show you. And he had... In his, in his room there, a strobe light, that light that flashes, constantly flashes. And as he began to flick in that strobe light, 
and begin to play this music. Look like I began to talk about a psychedelic uh, trip. And again, there were no drugs involved, no drugs involved. It looked like I had a, a, a psychedelic experience as this strobe began to continue to flash and this music began to go forth. One particular fella that was there with us suddenly got him started doing this dance. And again, there were no drugs, there was no alcohol, just this music and this strobe light. And he began to dance so until he began to take off his clothes. Now there was no, none of us were homosexual. None of us were, we were all good boys. I mean, good, you know, heterosexual boys, like girls. But this guy began to dance and just strip, I mean, literally strip down butt naked, you know. And then and we just kind of sit there and I was just kind of dazed out looking at this and man, it's crazy. You know, I was just in my mind, just tripping out. Finally, when this was over, uh, the boy said, what did I do? He didn't even know what was going on. He said, man, that blew my mind. And I think about this every now and then, how that vibe of music and that optical uh, stimulator, that strobe light, what it did to my conscious mind and how it began to blow my mind. You know, again, these are part of forces, demonic forces used to confuse and mess your mind up. You know, again, when you go to these seances, you go to these madams, the, 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 the lights are dark, dark lighting, you know, a uh, certain type of atmosphere is being created. You're dabbling with demonic spirits. And so there are vibes that demons uh, move on. At the same time, there are also a godly vibes and spiritual vibes, you know, uh, you know, again, Vibes and music, they conjure spirits. And many of the modern music, such as hip hop. Yeah, we'll get you with that one. I'm about to upset you with that. But a lot of that is in a vibe of a certain type of music. It's in the vibe of a certain type of atmosphere. It creates uh, the, the type of dancing. You know, again, I was in a church service, and this is why I tell you, you cannot bring everything into the church because what you're bringing in it is the spirit behind it. I was in the church once. Uh, and and, and these young, this young group got up to perform, and and uh, all of a sudden they started hitting this 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 uh, hip hop beat, and uh, the girl got up and started gyrating. Now this is the church, right in front of the whole congregation. Got up and started gyrating this 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 type of dance in conjunction with the music, and the the, the young little fella got around and turned around and started shaking his behind. And, and, and got up there and said, it's all right, it's all right. I'm thinking it's not all right. Do you all realize what you're up there doing in church? But again, and again, I know I'm saying this to some of you, you're getting offended, Reverend, leave them young folk alone, then young folk, let them young folk be young. I have no problem with young folk being young. What I'm saying is you cannot bring these things into the church, young or old, because there's a spirit behind it. And as this young lady began to gyrate, her behind and, and gyrate her body, which again is what a lot of this uh, of these vibes do. They cause a they cause a stimulation in the physical body, because what it's doing, it's actually touching the spirit, and the body is re re responding to what takes place in the spirit. And so, certain vibes, certain musics, stimulate your spirit and cause you to dance. Music makes you dance. Any kind of music. You know, it makes you dance, whether you're slow dragging or whether you uh, boogalooing. That's, 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 I'm probably giving my way my age by using that terminology. Or some of these other things. It, it, it's, it stimulates this and causes this kind of thing to come forward. At the same time, music in the spirit. Because, again, certain musics cause certain things. Church music. Well, I say you can't bring every type of music in church. But there is music that is in church. There is music used for praise and worship. There is music used uh, that stimulates spiritual gifts. I want to read something here. I want to read something here. This is coming from the book of uh, 2 Kings, the third chapter, in verse 14. And Elisha, who is a prophet, said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I will not look toward thee, nor see thee. But notice what he says in verse 15. But now bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass that when the minstrel played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. 
And he said, thus saith the Lord. In other words, the prophet prophesied when a man of God, a minstrel, played godly presence, invited God's presence. And as he prayed, played, the spirit of the Lord came upon the prophet and he prophesied. Notice when Solomon dedicated the temple. And the Bible said the people's voice and the musicians and the sound became as one that the presence of the Lord came into the temple in the Shekinah glory. The physical presence of God came in the form of a cloud to the point where the people could not minister. Notice what happened when David played, when Saul was tormented by demonic spirits. David played subtly and skillfully under the anointing of the Lord and it drove the spirits out. But just like there's music, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> just like there's music that drives demons out, there's music that invites spirits in. And so you cannot bring, you need to discern what you're dealing with because every kind of music cannot come into the church because of certain vibes, certain vibes, vibes conjure spirits. Some of these vibes are used in demonic worship. Again, you don't want to bring that into the church. And you know, you can see it, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, even in the way some people dress, you know, the, the, what the hip hop culture has done. Notice the style of dress with the hip hop culture. Uh, notice this, the style, uh, the way people uh, 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 carry themselves in the hip hop culture. Uh, notice the gyrations and the moves in the hip hop culture. Uh, it's because again, it's to a spirit. It's it's part of the spirit worship. I was looking at this young lady. Uh, God bless her. I'm praying for her. I'm praying. I really pray for her. She used to be a, 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 a young gospel singer. Her name is Katy Perry, who jumped off into, uh, my God, I don't know what you call this music. But now she parades on the stage as a satanic priestess. And her stage effects are demonic worship and these idols and, and she comes out in this this outfit and now here's a young lady that used to be saying well at least she uh sang gospel i don't know if she was saved necessarily or not but she sang gospel and got caught up into this culture and she's hitting it man she, she she's she, she's one of the renowned musicians again i don't know what type of music you can call this stuff i don't know if it's hip-hop or or what exactly it is uh, but it's way out there it's 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 demonically inspired it's it's even the stage and the setup and the atmosphere is demonically inspired you know and our young people gravitate toward this because again it goes back to satanic worship which is a part of the occult and so you cannot bring this thing into the church you should be aware what we're dealing with. You know, remember uh, 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 a presentation I did a number of years ago and I did a, a, a sermon on this. We're dealing with this kind, different types of demonic spirits. We're not dealing with the same type of spirit that we're dealing with now. We're dealing with different types of demonic spirits that have infiltrated the culture itself and become a part of the mainstream society. And the church is incorporating these things into, and you wonder why. A lot of you people are rebellious because, again, this is what the spirit promotes. This spirit promotes rebellion. Uh, this spirit promotes witchcraft. This spirit promotes sexual perversion. And I'm going to say something's going to offend a lot of you all, but I can't, can't be helped. Why do you think homosexuals gravitate toward the church? Why do you think that there's an increase in homosexuality? I mean, open gaze. In church. Now, church has always had homosexuals. I understand that. But it's because of the music, the perversion in the music that makes them feel comfortable in that environment. The Lord dealt with me on this. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say the Lord dealt me on it because I believe he did. Matter of fact, I thought about that this morning, the increase of gay, even now openly gay churches. Why? Because of the culture that has incorporated this type of music. And oftentimes, a homosexual will feel comfortable in a church, even in the choir, where the music is the main force, because the environment and the vibe and the atmosphere and the music has made them feel comfortable and has actually perverted, promoted their perversions. Yeah, y'all gonna get this after a while. Y'all gonna get this after a while. And my God, look at my time. My time is about up. We're going to carry this in the next week. But I want to get to just to something else here. 
so notice what, what, going back to what I'm saying, notice what Elijah did. He said, bring me a minstrel. And as he played skillfully under the anointing of the Lord, the spirit of prophecy came upon Elisha and he prophesied. You know, you have to understand, brothers and sisters, for every uh, uh, reality, there's a mimic. For every reality God has, the devil has a mimic. You know, God has music designed for praise and worship. God has music designed uh, for, uh, 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 my God, uh, help, healing. Healing is in it. It, it stirs gifts. It stirs anointings. But there are other musics that stir gifts that are being used by the devil. Divination. Remember this, and I'll say this, our time is about a, Amen. And I, I wish we had more time. We're going to take it next week. Don't worry. There's a part three to this, and who knows, maybe even a part four. But I sometimes look at how, even when we see people in church, and I'm talking about the church now, that prophesy, and much of the time they're prophesying, they're way off. They're way off. They're, the, the Lord is not using them. I might as well just tell you all like it is. The Lord is not. Everybody say the Lord is saying. The Lord ain't saying nearly half the stuff that folks say he's saying. Because first of all, the Lord is not going to prophesy good things over your mess. Now you shack it up and live with a woman, not even married to the girl, and yet somebody going to prophesy to you and tell you, I see prosperity and money in your life. God is going to bless you. God is not going to bless you over your mess. You know, you you married, you got a side chick. And you get there getting prophesied to. You know what the Lord would do if he were to really come down on y'all and give you a word? It wouldn't be no yeas. It would be some woes. And I've said that a lot. A lot of these, oh, yeah, yeah. In the biblical days, when the prophet showed up, the people trembled. They were afraid because they didn't know if the man was going to preach a yay or a woe. And sometimes they got woe. And woe meant judgment was coming to the people. And a lot of times in these churches, I'm not talking about particular religions or denominations or organizations. I'm talking about the church as a whole has gotten away from biblical principles, has gotten away from godly music, has invited the world. And one of the beefs that Jesus had with one of the churches was they invited Jezebel in. You invited Jezebel into the church, sat in the seat, and let her prophesy and cause the saints to commit fornication. The spirit of Jezebel is in the church because we've allowed certain things to come in, because it's associated with demon worship, and it comes from the occult. So whether you believe it or not, and I pray that you do, we're dabbling in the occult, and we're inviting certain things into the church that should not be here. All right, let me see how much more that's I can get to today. The spirit of divination. We talked about this last week, and I'm, I guess we'll have to close with this. Remember Apostle Paul uh, was uh, going through Philippi. This is the 16th chapter of Acts. Going through Philippi, he and Silas. And the Bible said there was a woman that followed them who had a spirit of divination. What is divination? Well, again, it goes back to the occult. The ability to read, the ability to divine, uh, the ability to know fortunes, the ability to conjure the dead, cast spells, read. You know, th th this was associated with divination. Uh, and if you notice something, she followed Paul and Silas around and kept saying, these be men of God, which show us the way of salvation. You know why she did that? Because that demonic spirit wanted to ally itself or, or appear to be allied with men of God. The Bible said Paul became grieved. And when he turned to her, he said, that spirit of divination, I command you, come out of her. Now notice, Paul was grieved. Why was Paul grieved? She was saying good stuff. She was saying stuff that would have, uh, 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 you know, got a bigger crowd because after all the people believed in her, her, her ability to divine. But Paul realized it was the wrong type of spirit, and you cannot bring every spirit. Remember our theme scripture that we preached last week uh, from uh, Saint John, the third chapter. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Fourth chapter, uh, uh, first John. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit whether it be of God. Don't believe everything that's prophesied. When Paul cast, cast that spirit of divination out. She can no longer prophesy. She can no longer divine. She can no longer tell fortunes. She can no longer read you. She can no longer do seances. She can no longer conjure the dead. She can no longer do that because that spirit had been cast out. And brothers and sisters, what we don't see a lot of nowadays that we should is casting out demons. 
because demons come with a lot of this stuff. There's baggage that comes with it. And you think because somebody told you something that the oh, it must be God, and it's a demonically inspired uh, 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 prophecy, a demonically inspired word that in many cases is designed to give you enough of the truth to get your attention, but to divert you from the true path. That's what I told you before. A lot of times you go into these madams that are that are reading you and giving you ESPN and telling fortunes. They're holding on to a cross, or they're telling you that their spiritual guide is leading them, or they're they're praying to to the Virgin Mary, or or that Christ has appeared to them. They're trying to ally themselves with something legitimate, but it's the wrong spirit. Believe not every spirit. Believe not every spirit, because many of them are demonically inspired. Here's another one. I'm bringing this to a close for real. Time is up. Apostle, uh, the Bible said that uh, when Philip went down to Samaria and preached, uh, the whole city was stirred and inspired by the preaching of Philip. And there was a man there by the name of Simon who was a sorcerer, again, part of the occult. And Simon had bewitched the whole city. He had he'd bewitched them with spells and uh, witchcraft and uh, 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 oh my God, charms and and uh, readings. That's how he bewitched the whole city. But when the whole city heard the gospel, the Bible said demons cried out of many that were possessed. Simon himself, trying to show alliance, got baptized. The next session, Peter and, Jay, uh, 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 Peter and John came down and prayed for the people that never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw this, he said, man, I can get back on top. I can be the man again. He goes to Paul, uh, uh, rather Peter and Paul, uh, John and says, I'm going to give you money. Give me this power that whoever I lay hands on, they might receive the Holy Ghost. And Peter said, thy money perish with thee. That you think the gift of God can be brought with money. Your money perishes with you. You and your money are going to perish. You and your money are going to hell. Or as I heard the preacher say the other day, very bluntly, to hell with you and your money. Ah, Y'all don't like what I'm saying. <laughs> Well, that's basically what it boiled down to. But he said, I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness. You're trying to ally yourself with the move of God with this psychic stuff. You're trying to ally yourself with the move of God with this readings and ESP and, and all these other things. You're part of the occult. The Lord rebuke you. The spirit of the Lord rebuke the spirit of the devil. And if you're bringing it into the church and if you're practicing it, let it alone before that devil gets a hold of you and really takes you down. All right, we're going to pick this up next week. I got more. I got more. My God, look at all this. That's just what I was trying to get to this week. But I got more coming. We're going to take this next week, dabbling in the, the dangers of dabbling in the occult. Now, so I pray to bring this to a close. I want you to get my book, The Challenges. Let me get out the glare there. The Challenges of the 21st Century Church. Get my book. You can simply go to Barnes & Noble or Amazon. BarnesandNoble.com, Amazon.com, and under the book category, type in my name, Scott A. Bradley, or the book title, The Challenges of the 21st Century Church. Do that. The book will come up, and it'll give you information on how to get it. I want you to get this book. You need to get this book. You must have this book. This book will bless you. It will inform you, and it will inspire you. You please need to do that. The book is only $13, just $13 for the book. My God, I could have sold it for 20 but they decided to sell it for 13 Well, that's them. They, the, the publishers got it. Matter of fact, I don't even have copies, which is why you can't get it from me, because the, it pretty much, as far as that goes, is out of my hands. Uh, you know, I mean, I have to order books, but, you know, that's a whole other thing. But get the book because it will bless you. It will inspire you. If you'd like to write me, praise the Lord, and, and give us a donation for ministry, we certainly would appreciate that. You can write me at P.O. Box 8044, Romeoville, Illinois. That's in Romeo and Juliet, Romeoville, Illinois, 60446. If you're writing a check or donation, write it to Scott Bradley Ministries. Also, we want to encourage you to visit our website, scottbradleyministries.vpweb.com. That's V as in Victor, P as in Paul, scottbradleyministries.vpweb.com. Uh, you can write us there. And, uh, and let me say this, too. Uh, some of you may want to know, say, preacher, can you come to our church and preach? Are you open for speaking engagements? Of course I am. Of course I am. Uh, go to my website. I've got contact information there. Uh, we preach all over the world. My God, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'd I, I love to have the opportunity to come in. And I'm not denomination, hung up on denominations. I don't just preach in one particular denomination. Wherever the Lord opens the door, I will go in and preach the gospel. Let me tell you now, when I'm not going, I'm not going in to preach your doctrine of, of you know, endless circles. 
You know, like what day you worship on, what name you baptize in, do your women wear pants? I ain't even gonna fool with that. You want me to come? I'll come and I'll preach the word of God to you and your congregation. Let's be clear on that. God bless you. All right, we're gonna pick this up next week. Uh, the dangers of dabbling in the occult. Until next Thursday morning at 11 a.m., this is Scott Bradley saying, God bless you. I love you. Pray for us. We'll be praying for you, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Hallelujah. Jesus is.